all indicators are built or are calculated on price. So whenever price changes trend, it subsequently leads to the change to the indicator. So you really do not expect an indicator to give you a leading edge of price. Most traders really do not think about this. And I really would say that it's not their fault. Because when you said it was like when I started about 10, 12 years back, everybody talks about indicators. Nobody talks about the correct way of using indicators. So you have use this indicator, use a signal line crossover, use a moving average crossover. That's the best way to do. It's like people want to have some kind of a confirmation. It can give you confirmations. Now, the series that we have gone over, we've had to look at Bollinger Bands, at the Stochastics, at the MACD, and the moving averages also uh, as the best way to use them. Now, the moving averages, let's take a case and example of the moving averages. They are, if used in the conventional way, like all indicators, like most of the traders tend to use the moving averages on a taking an entry on a moving average crossover using a combination of two moving averages. They are one of the most lagging indicators. And if you base your trading on that particular system, you are going to get into serious trouble because you will get into the trade when more than half of the move has already finished. So there are ways. What we looked at was we tried to use the indicators in a different way so that it gives us a leading edge. Right? All right. Now, let's have a look today at the ADH. Now, I want to show you this is a good indicator to use if you know how to use it correctly. At the same time, I also want to show you the lagging part of an indicator. So being an indicator, it has to be lagging. So how do you take that into account? What is the best way of using it? Right now, we have this indicator over here. I have plotted this ADX, which is this dark green line, and below that you have the DMI. Now, the ADX is a combination, or it is a combined indicator with the DMI, which is a directional momentum indicator, and the ADX is the average directional index, or you can call it. This was developed by oh, Wells Wilder and it can be really good if used properly. First, let's just concentrate on the ADX. We'll come back to the DMI lines subsequently. Now, the ADX, the characteristic of the ADX is very simply, when an ADX is, or the reading of the ADX is somewhere around 20, it means that an expected trend is supposed to start from here. So first and foremost use of the ADX is that if it is close to 20, it is expected to start moving out from the oversold area of 20. That's one. And if it's expected to move out, it means that a trend is expected to start. So, of course, alternatively, if your ADX is in the overbought area, it's overstretched very high. It means that the trend is about to finish. It means that the trend has stretched itself and you are looking for a pullback or a retracement. Now, one very important point about the ADX is it does not give you the direction of the trend. Now, whether price is in an uptrend or whether price is in a downtrend, your ADX in both ways is going to give you the beginning of a trend, but not when price is going to go up or when price is going to go down. Let's have a look at this situation. Uh, as you can see, right, you can see my cursor over here. You had this ADX come down to, I, I've plotted a line of 20 over here. So the ADX come down to 20. Now, when it's at 20 and it starts rising from here, it means that the trend is about. But here you can see that you have a downtrend. Right? So don't get confused about this. A lot of traders get confused about the fact that if the ADX has started moving up, you would expect price to move up. No. Your ADX gives you the beginning of a trend, whether it's an uptrend or whether it's a downtrend. So that you have to use something else to tell you whether price is getting into an uptrend or price is getting into a downtrend. Now, this is a basic area of confusion for a lot of traders. But that said, the ADX is a very good timing indicator. So one of the best ways of using ADX is if you're taking a trade on whatever system you have. Let's say you're taking a trade on maybe a divergence. Let's say you're taking a trade 
a, a break of a trend line. Let, let's plot a trend line over here, right? I, I would plot this trend line over here. And this would be a place where I would say, okay, price has started changing trend. And I should start getting into an uptrend right now. Now, if you start getting into an uptrend, you can use the ADX as a timing indicator right over here when price starts breaking or has broken the trend line, starts moving up. You look at the ADX, you see that the ADX is still moving down. So you would ideally want to take a trend when the ADX rises above 20. It moves below this 20 line, starts moving above. Now, if you look at this, this is a point of the lagging indicator. If you look at this, this is where, let, let's just zoom it a little inside. When did the ADX start coming out of the 20? It went below and started coming out of the 20 right over here. And what happened over here? Your uptrend has finished and price starts moving down. So when you're using an indicator, obviously it's lagging. So this is also giving you lagging, lagging use of an indicator. So the, one of the disadvantages of using any indicator, but an ADX can be used, as I said, as a timing indicator. Let's take the current situation. What we do have is right now the USD CAD. We are looking at the Canadian dollar on the one hour time frame. We have the ADX moving out of 20, which means that there is a strong trend. Now, looking at this if you're looking at the beginning of a trend and you have the ADX moving out, you know that there is still some movement left in the trend. So you would have to remain in the trend. You would not try to go against the trend. Maybe if, if you're looking at a stochastic, maybe if you're looking at a MACD. I'm sure if you look at any other indicator, let, let's just plot one and have a look. This would show as overstretched. And a lot of traders tend to use the fact that if this is overstretched, if this is in the overbought area, that means price is expected to change trend. You're expected to move down. But here your ADX is telling you that the ADX has just started moving up from the 20 region and started moving up. So you should ideally remain long.